Hey everybody, I'm Jesse and you're watching Outside Is Calling. Today I'm coming to you from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. You're actually about a half hour northeast of there. Uh, this is uh, my dad, brother-in-law, and I come up here every year for our, our annual guy's hunting trip. He's right there. Okay. Are you he's, getting all this on camera? Well, he's, he tied his deer to a tree. Is that a pin I didn't deer? Is that a pin? Tree. Huh? nice to be out here because it's good quality time with family and it's nice to be outdoors too. I've got a couple more days before we head back down south and I wanted to share a couple things with you. The first thing I want to share with you today is how I go about getting a good cell signal while traveling and I'm hoping that sharing how I do it maybe you'll find something that works for you. Secondly, I want to share with you a documentary I'm working on. I'm about roughly halfway done with it and uh, I want to see what your thoughts are. So let's jump in first to the cellular signal booster. That's a mouthful. Uh, what I have is the Drive 4G XRV. This is actually the cell booster we use in our RV when we're traveling. Uh, I know from past history coming to this area, there's a very, very weak signal, if any, typically. It's almost, oftentimes there is no signal. And so uh, I knew I needed to have a better signal this time around because now I'm, I'm in school full time and I have to, to get all my work done and upload that. What I've done is I started off at the antenna outside. There's a, there's a TV antenna. That's where I hooked up the, the, the WeBoost omnidirectional outdoor antenna. I just ran the wire straight from that right to through the window. There's some duct tape on the window just to keep rain out. And uh, the wire comes into the, the WeBoost uh, signal booster, which then both sends and receives signal from the indoor antenna. So it's a pretty cool system. It's worked very well. And uh, I'll show you. As I mentioned, the cell signal here is very poor. And so when we got here, uh, I, I had, uh, this is a Verizon cell phone that I have. And I was getting uh, 1X or 1X extended, which is not even, you know, it's not even 3G, let alone you know, LTE service. So it's a very poor signal. Once I powered everything up, it kicked ass. The signal went from 1X to two to four bars of LTE. So that was, I mean, exponentially powerful. The first thing I want to mention, I, I've spoke with people and this booster, if you're in an area that has a decent signal, like let's, let's say you have two bars of LTE and you want more, you will see some gain, but not a lot of gain in your signal where this system really excels in, is in places like this where you have a very weak signal. So it'll take those weaker signals and give you 3G, maybe, maybe even 4G or LTE service. And that was exactly what happened here. Um, I don't think we'd always get four bars of LTE, but uh, but at least getting it from no signal to at least a bar or two of LTE is pretty awesome. I've been able to do my homework. I've been able to even stream some, some YouTube videos and stuff, so that's been pretty cool. The other thing I wanted to talk to you about today is about this documentary. So this documentary is about the Eagle Creek Fire, which took place in the Columbia River Gorge uh, 2017. For those of you that don't know, the Columbia River Gorge creates the, the border of Oregon and Washington. Washington on the north side, Oregon on the south side. Uh, we lived there for five years, and while I was working at the Bonneville Dam, when the, which is right across from Eagle Creek, uh, when everything shut down, uh, I had to go to work as Mission Essential Personnel and got some back row seats to seeing the firefighters, uh, all the helicopters and the helitac base, uh, and I got to go over there and speak to some of them, find out what was going on, and so I wanted to make sure to share that footage with everybody and uh, share just kind of what took place to fight that fire and also what people you know like, like us and people living there were going through The Columbia River flows over 1,200 miles during its journey to the Pacific Ocean. An 80-mile section known as the Columbia River Gorge is the jewel of the Pacific Northwest. 
forces of nature are what have sculpted the gorge into the beautiful landscape it is today. On September 2nd, with our two-month-old son at home, we had no idea our world was about to be turned upside down. At 5 p.m., they caught their first glimpse of a fire across the river. Thanks for watching. Uh, please let me know what you think about the documentary in the comments down below. And also, in those comments, let me know if you guys have found any good cell boosters that work well for you, uh, especially if you have any cheaper options for those people that are looking for a good solution for that. Uh, anyhow, uh, there'll be some links down in the description if you're looking to find some of those things we talked about. So again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.